Okay. So we are actually streaming live on my personal YouTube uh, Facebook page and also on this uh, press secretary Facebook page as well as on YouTube. So uh, people can watch from uh, all of these platforms. So thank you very much once again, uh, Chairman, for taking out time to join me here in the studio. Actually, it is a beautiful studio to talk about this all important topic. I know that this is so, you are an expert in this field and our people are going to have a wonderful conversation today with you and myself. And we will discuss in depth on what this has done to the continent as a whole. And then we will bring it down to what it has done in, uh, in Cameroon and to Ambazonia in particular. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining. Like I said, this is your girl, your lady, Cecilia Amabo. If you're tuning in, if you're a newcomer on this side, kindly subscribe, like, and share your thoughts in the comment section. And also I'm inviting you to join the membership club of this channel. So if you want to be part of the team on this channel, kindly join the membership. And if you look on the YouTube channel, you will see just beside the subscribe button, you will see the join button. So you can just press the join button and you join to become part of this community. And to returning subscribers, what can I say? Thank you so much for being here, for always supporting the channel, liking, commenting, and sharing your thoughts, most especially in the comment section. It's been incredible. The interactions in the comment sections are incredible, and I truly appreciate you for that. And again, we'll be giving a shout out to all the members that have already signed in to be part of this team. So just know that if you're part of the community, whether you're a member or not, Hey, we are giving you a shout out because your contribution is totally appreciated at all levels. So don't feel that if you're not a member, you're not part of the community. No, you are part of the community. And so, ladies and gentlemen, let's get back into today's topic. Today's topic, oh my God, I'm actually really overexcited about the whole thing because of what I know that this has done to Africa and how the information that we'll get from here. So guys, today, like I said, today is a very insightful topic. We are talking on the shadows of the past. Shadows of the past, the new colonialism in the 21st century. We are all conversant with this phrase. We are all conversant with this uh, topic and the discourse that has been going on in, acad uh, in the academia, in political fee, in, in every aspect of our life. So today we dive into a critical topic that has shaped the uh, trajectory of African nations for decades. Foreign aid and its uh, influence or agenda of control and influence in Africa. For over six decades, billions of dollars, billions and billions of dollars have flowed into the continent. But has it truly helped or has it marked a sinister plot of neocolonialism in the, in the continent? Foreign aid uh, uh, tapped as humanitarian assistance has become a, a potent tool for Western power and China to manipulate Africans' economy and political landscape. This hasn't uh, <clears throat> this isn't charity, it's about power. The power to dictate policy, shape land uh, leadership and control entire nations. The veil of uh, benevolence has <laughs> been lifted, revealing a complex web of interest that prioritize the donor's agenda over the recipient's need. Let's be clear, ladies and gentlemen, genuine aid should empower, it should uplift, it should pave the way for self-sufficiency. But in Africa, we've seen the opposite. Countries like Zambia, Mozambique, Kenya, Nigeria, Cameroon, Ghana, uh, uh, Somalia have received toggling amount of money yet remain mired in poverty, in debt and corruption. This circle of economic, uh, entrepreneur must end. The numbers are staggering. Over 1 billion in aid has been pumped into Africa since the 1960s. Yet the continent remains one of the poorest in the world. 
that is what they say it remains one of the poorest in the war western powers have long wield it as a political weapon attaching harsh conditions that cripple africans economy and compromises leadership the devastating legacy of structural adjustment uh, programs like the the sap still lingers leaving millions in poverty the imf and the world bank have dictated economic policies forcing african nations to to what to privatize industries uh, cut uh, subsidies and reduce government spendings the result what is the result many african economies were crippled public services deteriorated and millions were left in deeper poverty now china has engaged <laughs> china has also entered the game so now china has emerged as a major player in the whole game offering development loans with high interest rate threatening to ensnare uh, nations in a new cycle of dependency Djibouti, a home of China's first overseas military base, is a stark example of what we are talking about and what we will be dwelling on today. The Belt and Road Initiative, touted as a, a pinnacle of Africa, infrastructure wolves, is in reality a strategy moved to flow dominance. So unsettling reality is that foreign aid often benefits donor more than the recipient, which is not what foreign aid stands for if foreign aid benefit don't uh, uh, the donors themselves more than the recipient then it is no longer aid so this aid they are perpetuating modern colonialism african leadership is compromised unable to act in the best interest of their people without facing foreign world repercussions the sovereignty of african nation is on uh, under siege as external powers exert control through debt, economic pressure, and military presence in Africa. But is there hope? Yeah, there is hope. African nations are rising up against this new form of uh, subjugation. Mali, Guinea, and Burkina Faso have uh, rejected Western influence, seeking alliance outside traditional powers and embracing Pan-Africanism. More leaders are calling for reforms focused on self-reliance, local industry, and debt relief. So, ladies and gentlemen, as we discuss today, we must question its true purpose. Is it about empowering Africa or maintaining foreign control? Until Africa breaks free from external influence, it cannot achieve true independence. The future of the continent depends on it. It's time for Africa to reclaim its part dictated by uh, dictated by foreign donors, but by Africans for Africans. So, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, today's topic is really juicy, and it's going to be a heated debate here in the studio. We said we are discussing on the shadows of the past, neo-colonialism in the 21st century. What? is neo-colonialism in the 21st century and like i said our guest in the studio is an expert in this area and he also sits as the chairperson of the economic council of the ambazonian governing council one of the leading movements for the liberation of the people of ambazonia and so mr M <clears throat> i will choose i will withhold his name and I will just continue to address him as the chairperson of the Economic Council. So, Mr. Chairman, you are welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Um, when I got the call about neocolonialism in the 21st century, it was such a pleasure to talk about such a subject that has been hindering around us since uh, 1960, which was when a lot of African countries had their independence. Uh, so-called independent. So it's an honor for me to be here. Thank you very much. But do you want to throw more light on where are you based and uh, where did you study and uh, in what field are you? I know you have a huge in-depth in this, but if you want to talk about any other thing that you're involving without necessarily disclosing anything that is most important to you, and you want to hold as classified, you are free to go ahead and do that. So just give a brief introduction of yourself to the audience. 
Again, um, thank you for having me. Um, I am Emmanuel. Once again, I serve as the chair of the National Economic Council of the Ambazonian Governing Council. Um, I currently reside in the United States where I have been in the last 30 years. Um, I work in the financial services industry. Um, mostly I've been in the financial services industry. Um, in addition to that, uh, politics, um, I would say economics and geopolitics, uh, to be specific, has been one of my interests over time. Um, so I've uh, tried to garner knowledge and keep abreast of everything, most things that are happening around that subject matter. Um, so, but uh, overall, my interest has been trying to address the issues that continue to to, to be like a yoke around the necks of countries of the South, which uh, is placed primarily by what we describe as countries of the North, the empire, uh, the neo-colonialists, and not just the neo-colonialists, but the colonialists or originally. So once again, I'm glad to be here to talk about these issues. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I'm so happy for you to have taken out time from your busy schedule because I know you're a very busy man to uh, to sit here today to talk to our people. And this is what we should all be doing, the entire African continent. Those of us who are out here who have the opportunity to speak, we should be able to create our time and speak to our people, educate our people and empower the continent. This is how we contribute. So thank you once again. And so... Okay, so today let us go straight into the uh, uh, into the conversation. First of all, uh, when you hear of the shadows of the past, new colonialism in the twenty first century, what comes into your mind when this topic is this, uh, mentioned? What first of all comes in your mind, and what is it in the first place? Um, th thanks once again. I think that is a very pertinent question. Um, when you hear shadows of the past, it, it seems to give the impression that colonialism or neocolonialism is something that uh, happened in a century ago or two, three centuries ago as it comes to the issue or the aspect of slavery. But uh, as we look around us, we see that it continues to linger and continues to be one of the driving factors that uh, continue to govern our daily lives on our daily lives especially people that reside in countries of the of the south in this case uh, our case study being uh, the subject might have been in in africa now it is very important for us to before we really delve into the subject to understand because a lot of this is driven um, somehow by what i would uh, aligned to culture, culture of the people of the West, especially um, the culture being that they were the individuals that will um, uh, believe so much in the aspects of capitalism, capitalism to the extent that um, you will create wars and kill and to, to make money. They would send individuals for expeditions, which happened, if you re recall, uh, to the Americas just to make sure that they find out where all of the gold deposits may have been located and then come back and report this way um, expeditionary forces can be sent to extract those goals. Now, the people of those cultures um, always believed that the land was for them to borrow while they were in this, in this lifespan, spend their life and then, and then leave that they did not own the, own the land, that the land was there to serve them while they were they existed in this lifetime. Meanwhile, the colonialists had the culture where you come in, you claim ownership of land, and then uh, extract its resources and keep it to yourself, even if it means killing as many people as, as possible. So with that history, they spread their tentacles across the world, um, and this became the birth of colonialism as they went into the into places of the world if you look at australia which is today currently inhabited by mostly europeans and the indigenous people what happened to them and you look at the americas um, the, where they came in took the land and took the resources and could hardly be able to get everything for themselves and had to go some places else looking for slaves to come and do all the labor and extract the resources for their own benefit 
So this becomes the birth rock or the, the birth of colonialism. Um, today, that has you will think that uh, you ask the question, um, what comes to mind about the shadow of the past? You will think that all of those things happened in the past, but uh, it, it has basically transformed. It's when it became not appetizing as it used to be, then it basically changed forms from what uh, from the use of slave uh, labor for the extraction of resources to today other methods that we will go um, deep into to talk about um, in the course of this conversation. But that is what essentially comes to mind, that it hasn't changed and it's remained uh, the same and it has just changed forms. Oh, thank you very much. 